We're here on the Isle of Mull talking to Dave Sexton, who's the RSPB's Mull officer for Mull Eagle Watch. And for Mull Eagle Watch and everything else that we do here. Yeah, because we do the Golden Eagle work and Corn Creeks on Iona and all the public side of things up at the Eagle Hyde. Uh-huh. So, yeah, it's all of that. The big One of the big things on Mull in, in every possible way is the Sea Eagle. Yes. Which is yeah. what Mull Eagle Watch, part of what Mull Eagle Watch is concerned about. Now, you were here, were you, when the sea eagle was reintroduced? I was on Mull, actually, when the first birds started arriving. Only on holiday, I have to add, but we saw one of the first birds coming in mm-hmm. from the Isle of Rum, which is where they were actually reintroduced, starting back in 1975. Um, birds were, were taken from Norway by the Norwegian authorities. Uh, one chick from a nest of two would be taken. So about ten birds a year for ten years were imported to the Isle of Rum. Um, And once they'd acclimatised and settled in, they were released. And they then spend many months and years wandering and exploring. And the first birds started to appear on Mull. So they they adopted Mull? Yeah, they found Mull very much to their liking. I mean, it's it's a very rich prey base here for eagles of of both sorts, golden eagles and sea eagles. So there's a good population of seabirds and mountain hares, things like guillemots, razorbills, fulmers, gulls, um, and of course carrion. You know, they'll, uh, sea eagles in particular eat a lot of carrion, so whether it's dead deer or, or sometimes dead sheep, mm-hmm. they'll, um, they'll come down and feed on that. And geese, you know, big population of grey lag geese around now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mull was definitely top of their list. <laughs> so how many stayed in Rome? Um, well, the population now is there's one to two pairs between Ram and Canna. Yes. Um, and then um, we have ten pairs now on Mull. So Mull and Skye really are the capitals of, of the, for the white-tailed eagle. So the, the sea eagles that went to Skye, were mm-hmm. they also the Rum release? Yes. yes. Oh, right. Yeah. There's also, uh, after a, a short break, they did a second batch of reintroductions mm-hmm. on, in Westeros um, um, in the, the 1980s. So... Um, another 58 birds were released there so it just needed that extra boost just to really make sure it was going to work Mm -hmm. and and now year by year there's one to two new pairs establishing so we're up at about 45 pairs now still a very rare bird you know 40 pairs is is minute but it's getting there yes the one of the things that's very interesting to a lot of people is the website that the RSPB run mm. for Mara and Brega to uh, young eagles, immature, yeah. sea, immature sea eagles, I guess. How old are they now? They're coming up to one year old. So they're as young as that? They are, they are. And, I mean, sea eagles look very different when they're immature. They're, they're d- a dark chocolate brown, dark beak, mm. dark eye, and it's not until they're five years old that they get the white tail and the pale head and the yellow beak. So... Very different looking birds. So Mara and Bria are still very much youngsters. Um, and they're out there. They're doing very well at the moment, Touchwood. They're, um, um, Mara is on Mull, as we speak. The latest satellite data shows that he's not a million miles from where we are today. Um, but Bria has, has set off on one of her biggest journeys. And she's up on Canna at the moment. Ooh. So the satellite data just recently showed that she's up there. Mm-hmm. So... They're fine, and they will wander and explore now for the next four or five years. Whose idea was the satellite tracking? Well, it was a project that the Seagull project team, which oversees all the UK work, both in um, England and Scotland, was wanting to look at the dispersal of of juvenile seagulls. Where do they go? How long do they spend in areas? uh, What sort of habitats are they using? So that's where the the idea initially came from. But um, we were able to get funding from Scottish Natural Heritage and Forestry Commission Scotland, who are also partners here on the Mull Eagle Watch, um, and they helped fund the, the satellite tags. And then Roy Dennis from the Highland Wildlife Foundation helped us fit them. He has a lot of experience with ospreys and other Mm -hmm. birds of prey around the world. And so we're very lucky to have him help. And we hope to do two more this year as part of this wider study looking at sea eagle dispersal. And are you learning a lot from that? We are. We're learning a lot that actually for the first six months or so they don't go very far at all (laughs) they're very much home birds they're with the parents for the first few months after they fledge and being fed and and looked after that way Uh, but even when they're independent they seem to spend a lot of time still on near where they hatched and it's only now in the following spring that they're starting to explore so yeah 
there's a lot of dangers out there too of course that's the my worry all the time is now they're leaving the safety of mull where you know there's a there's a very positive or at least benign attitude towards birds of prey that's not always the case on on mainland mm-hmm. argyle and indeed further afield and one of our sea eagle chicks from a few years ago was poisoned over in tayside uh, last year so Mara and Bria are now, you know, very nice. vulnerable, but we hope that they don't come down and feed on any poison baits. Do you have trouble with egg collectors or other people who disturb birds? Is that much of a nuisance? Yeah, well, Mull Eagle Watch is a, a huge sort of wildlife neighbourhood watch scheme, which initially started out um, nearly 10 years ago now, um, uh, watching out for egg collectors, because up until that point, we were losing eggs um, to sea eagles and golden eagles every year. Um, there's still a hardcore band of people who are still obsessed with collecting these eggs. It's a very bizarre, strange pastime, but also can be hugely damaging to a rare bird like the sea eagle um but now we are also getting um problems with photographers who um who don't respect the law and don't realize they need a license to get close to to eagles and certainly to eagles at nests and last year on mull we had um a case with a, an individual went straight up to a, a seagull nest and sat himself down and started taking photographs despite all the signs and the warning and being asked not to go up there luckily he was seen immediately by one of our many volunteers on mull who, for the eagle watch and the police got to him and and carted him off mm-hmm. and he was charged and then later found guilty and with charged with reckless disturbance and fined 600 pounds so he was got but that pair failed i'm afraid and and, and disturbed by them yes because she had just started incubation and Mm. she was off the nest for two hours and the eggs very quickly get cold Mm. at this time of year you know it's uh, it doesn't take much so that pair having bred successfully for many years failed was that an important milestone that conviction it was it was the first uh, time someone had been um, charged and successfully charged with disturbing a sea eagle Mm -hmm. under the there's a nature conservation scotland act from 2004 and reckless disturbance is in there Mm -hmm. um it's it used to be sometimes you might just stumble upon a nest by pure accident and that's not what we're about you know it's, the, the, he wasn't charged for that he was charged because he then didn't think uh oh i shouldn't be here these birds are clearly upset i should keep moving in which case the bird would have gone straight back on yeah. he sat sat himself down with his camera and lay down and was taking pictures of the bird calling frantically overhead so yeah that's the reckless bit yes um so yes. you know you're not out to try and catch everybody out who's just out for a, a nice walk in the hills it's responsible behavior around things like eagle's nest and taking notice of of the warning signs and the people who say don't go there exactly yeah there's <laughs> it's a, rather willful you can't uh, even on mile you'll have seen the yellow eagle watch yes. signs around you can't miss it no. there's no excuse um and there's no need to get close to these birds no just give them a break while they're at the nest and there's many places like up at Loch Freezer at the Eagle Hide where you can come and have someone explain to you you can see the birds really closely it's a fantastic unique opportunity actually it's yes. the only place in the world as far as we know that that has a hide overlooking a nest area so it's a great thing for and a mull. much more straightforward place to go as well much more straightforward you know you're not going to break the law yes. um, and it's good fun and just dramatic dramatic views of the birds themselves. Uh